All right, so another day, another new update for a custom ROM. And yes, we are talking about the latest update for Derp Fest Official, which is based on Android 12. Now, it came out yesterday and a lot of you have been requesting me already that please go ahead and review this particular update. There are significant changes, so we'll definitely look into the change log. Now, understand that I might not have the exact accurate numbers of battery because I've just flashed it this morning. And since then, I've been running the benchmarks. I've charged the from phone from 0 to 100. So mostly, I'll be give, able to give you accurate information. And we do have our team of LA tests as well who've given us quite a lot of feedback about this ROM. So before we get into the complete review, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, join us on Telegram. We have more than 1300 people over there. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have Derp Fest official ROM OSS YU and might works on both the variants. Now it is updated on the 3rd of December 2021. Now, if we talk about the change log, it is quite significant over here. As far as the device is concerned, look at the first nail. He says ton of improvements seriously that means for this particular device that is the poco x3 pro he's done a lot of hard work and uh, commendable job right merged linux fixed fingerprint issues when taking screenshot now the rom change log is quite significant so i'll not be going through the entire thing because then the video will be 20 minutes long and i don't want to bore you guys you can go ahead and you know pause the video and read that now as far as the notes are concerned build ships with g apps se linux status is enforcing right so that means you will have safety net you will have drm info giving you widevine l1 and you will have g apps in build so the flashing process is pretty straightforward pretty simple nothing to worry there right now the moment you boot into this particular rom as always you have the default dub fest wallpaper you can of course go to wallpaper and customization and as you can see you now have android 12 themed wallpapers over here and they are working with material u so that's really really great monet ui doing a great job over here to the left of course you have google feed now let me give you a disclaimer that this device is in always 120 hertz mode that's what we are talking about so of course the ui and uh, the google feed is really really smooth really really subtle even when you're scrolling through the google feed if you go to the home screen you will notice that the experience is really really neat now you do have your standard quick tiles over here including auto rotate and all the other things which are working absolutely fine important thing for the poco x3 pro is the screen recorder because on a lot of android 12 custom roms it has been lagging till now so you can record internal and external audio you can show touches on the screen you can now show a stop dot lower quality bigger file size limit so let's go ahead and click start and you will get a timer over here as you can see with the notification the recording has started and let's see here do you see any lag i don't because i would say this is a huge improvement compared to what it was earlier it was lagging much more earlier as far as the screen recording is concerned but trust me the ui lag is there when you're recording the screen just have a look at this experience over here it's actually it looks like it's in 30 fps or something to be very honest so let's go ahead and stop the screen recording and see if it is evident in the screen recording or not so it has processed the recording let's increase the volume over here the recording has started yeah so you cannot see that in the recording which is good but i don't know how badly the user experience will be impacted when you're recording games and stuff like that so the screen recorder is doing a fine job nothing to worry there but there is one bug which is universal for now this is a second device on which i'm looking at it that is the screen recording audio if i show you listen to the audio first with a notification the recording has started now it's 
coming to normal. So I would still recommend if you are, you know, a gamer who wants to put your gameplay on YouTube or recording for casual purposes, use a different third party screen recorder like Screen Recorder No Ads or anything. There are many recorders available for Android. So that's everything about the screen recorder. If we go ahead and talk about the launcher, as you can see over here, this is your quick step launcher, which day by day is getting new features, new customization options, which is really, really neat. You also have developer options. Now, that's a lot of options. I'm not gonna dive into that. But I'll tell you this, apart from the app opening and closing animation, this ROM is doing a great job. The app animation is also sort of fine. It's not really bad. The launcher is laggy or, you know, sometimes it is laggy and stuff. But apart from that, the UI is doing a pretty, pretty splendid job and it shows that the developer has done a lot of hard work. Now, apart from the screen recorder, if you go to the edit menu, you have your privacy access tiles, including battery saver and all the other options. You do have caffeine, you have compass, you have heads up. These are good things over here. Reboot, sound, search, volume panel, things like HBM, that is high brightness mode, CABC in device parts, refresh rate. Let's have a look over here. So you have 90, 60 and 120, which is absolutely fine. You do have the advanced reboot menu over here and you have the settings shortcut from which there is no lag now. If you go to settings using the quick tile shortcut, it is working absolutely fine. And I did show you that if you actually go to wallpaper in style and enable themed icons beta, they are working absolutely fine. Now there is one small bug that I've noticed over here. You see the color of these icons, right? So if you go to wallpaper in style, change wallpaper, Say you go to a different one over here, set this one, okay, now the whole UI is purple. So let's go back to another color over here because the themed icons are supposed to look different over here. So let's click on this, okay. So yeah, that's not exactly a bug, you have to change wallpaper after you enable themed icons and stuff like that for them to take the same accent color as the entire UI and yes, this all looks beautiful. Anyways, as far as the ROM is concerned, there are no bloat applications found. This ROM boots really, really light. As far as the camera situation is concerned, you do get Google Camera Go, which can take some decent pictures, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you go to settings, you do see that it is smooth as always. And if you go to about phone, you go to Android version 12. You now have a Dubfest logo over here. That's the maintainer, November security patch. Soon we will have ROMs giving you December security patch as well. So that's neat and SE Linux status is enforcing. Now let's quickly talk about the safety net feature over here. Your safety net is passing by default. So nothing to worry there. Even if you go to the Google Play Store, your device is certified. So your banking applications and financial transactions, even on a custom ROM enabled device should be absolutely okay. Now, as I said earlier, if you go to DRM info, you will notice that you do have Widevine L1. So if you want to consume a lot of cons content on this huge display, you should not have any problem with Netflix or Amazon Prime. Now, those are the basic things that are taken care of. If you ask me how is the charging speed, this device does support a 33 watt charger. And as far as this ROM is concerned, it took around one hour and 38 minutes for me to go from 10% to 100%. So remember this device has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it does take time even with fast charging using one handed mode. This has happened for me for the second time. There's some shortcut over here which triggers your one-handed mode. Anyways, that's a discussion for another day. Now, the moment you go to settings, everything else is the same. Say, even if you go to display for that matter, over here, more or less the same features which are available in all Android 12 custom ROMs. You do see that you have the show refresh rate option over here. You can go ahead and put this to 90 Hertz and yes, 90 Hertz works. Now, the reason 90 Hertz is significant is because this is a good balance between smoothness and battery life. So if you want, you can go ahead and use that. Auto rotate screen, tap to wake, prevent accidental wake up, dark theme, you can enable or disable from here. So all those things are present. Now the interesting part over here is we still don't get the Android 12 game space in this particular ROM. There might be a reason why they are not including it. I'm pretty sure sooner that should be available over here. If you go to the battery section, you do have thermal profiles along with support for touch control that is 180 hertz touch sample rate which is really really neat i have enabled it for the benchmark applications unfortunately in the little time that i had with this particular rom i was not able to do a game test so if i think that the rom is worth i'll probably go ahead and do a gaming review of this particular rom now let's go ahead and check the customization options in dub fest or dub space now as i said yesterday in one of the redmi k20 pro videos that uh, 
custom ROMs have started getting almost all the customization that they were getting in Android 11. In Android 12, you have battery settings, carrier label, clock and date settings, status bar items, traffic indicators, miscellaneous, quick settings, lock screen shortcuts, lock screen UI, battery customization and general settings. Now quickly, let's have a look at all these options one by one. Now, I'm not gonna explain each of these features because again, the video will be 20 minutes long and I don't want to bore you guys. So if there is a feature that you're looking for before flashing this ROM, just have a look at this particular list of things that are available and that will help you to decide. Save battery percentage, you can keep it next to the icon. You can enable the battery bar and all the other things. So if you enable the battery bar, Let's see here, status bar top, status bar bottom, battery bar color, let's set it to green. Yeah, uh, that's there, it's there at the top. Status bar bottom, right? Status bar top, it would be at the very top. Right, so you get all these additional features as far as carrier label is concerned, nobody uses that. Clock and date settings, you have the option of showing seconds over here and those features are working. Now there are two things with Android 12 ROMs right now. One is, do you have that customization option? And the second being, is it working? Because remember, it's 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 an OS which is two to three months old. So there will be things which will be broken. So you have clock and date settings over here. You have status bar items. You can enable or disable your shortcuts. Traffic indicators, one of my favorites. I use them all the time. They are working absolutely fine. Now, if you go to miscellaneous, you do have the Dubfest logo over here, 4G icon, roaming indicator, and brightness control, right? Now, you have quick settings over here. Vibrate on touch and all these. Okay, battery estimate. Let's see here. Yeah, you have battery estimates working. So, as I said, you know, not only having these many features is a novelty, but if they're working as expected, they do add value to your experience. And I definitely believe in that. You have lock screen shortcuts and then you have lock screen UI, fingerprint error vibration, music visualizer. Now you have battery charging light over here. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's gonna do anything. You have customization for your Monet UI, which you can override and then you have general settings. So all in all, you know, Dubspace is giving you a lot of customization options. And as you saw in the title, now comes the important part. We are talking about benchmark numbers because they are really, really interesting in this particular ROM. Now there are a couple of things which are a letdown in this particular ROM. The app icon animations could be better and smoother. The launcher can do a much better job, but those things are something you can fix with a custom launcher. Now let's go ahead and first talk about the CPU throttle test over here. So let's go to Google Photos and let's get rid of this recording and library. Look at the CPU throttle test. Average score of 207,999. That's 208,000 GIPS. CPU throttle to 85% of its max performance. This was at around 30 degrees of battery temperature. The maximum score was 223,655 GIPS, right? So a CPU throttle test, which is really, really good, is always welcome. Now let's go to Geekbench over here. So 786 single core and 2568 multi-core. I know the multi-core is a little low, but these are excellent scores, trust me. Now let's talk about Antutu. Now since the time I've got the Poco X3 Pro, this is the highest Antutu score that I've seen on this particular phone and that says something about this particular ROM. Now remember this was done with thermal prof profile enabled to benchmark mode and all the other things and allowing the device to cool down to 30 degrees and stuff. 602,052, right? Now the last thing that we will check, not exactly accurate battery information, but let's see here. We came from 100 to 80 over here. So let's go to battery usage. And as you can see over here, we've had about one hour and 51 minutes. And remember we were at 90 because we flashed when we were at 100 and stuff like that. So this ROM looks solid. This looks great. If you can ignore a few small things, which is nitpicking, this looks like a great performer, a great device for almost daily driving. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this particular update? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.